Hi, I'm Janie. Welcome back to the JC League House. Today I want to talk to you about fireplaces. I know I did another fireplace video a few months ago and talked about the six fireplaces in this house and how they're treated differently with tile, marble, faux cast stone. But today I want to get into more of the condition issues. And as you can see, this one's got a little bit of a problem. I'm up here in JC and Nellie League's bedroom, or as it's called the boudoir on the plans. And this is the least damage of the three fireplaces I'm going to show you today. So let's dive in and let me give you a quick look at what happened to this one. On close inspection, we found out the fireplace tiles aren't actually adhering to the wall anymore. So we're putting clear contact paper on to hold the tiles in place. And then we're going to try to remove them. Hopefully the contact paper will keep them from falling to the ground and breaking. Because right now, all of the tiles are intact on this fireplace. So hopefully we can save them. Just to make sure. Okay. Now it's videoing. Joe was helping me, so you know right off the bat it didn't end well. But we started with what we thought was a good plan and we immediately found that our technique was not okay, working. I got the contact paper and you can just start because I think it's going to hold. Okay. So, we'll so this was quite a bit of trial and error. All right, plan B. I already dropped and broke one, but this seems to be holding it tight. So instead of doing one by one, I scored my plastic. And when I asked her off. to turn the video off Whole and section. help, it's because things were going really badly. I do know now you should not start at the bottom and work your way up when you're removing tile that's not adhered to the wall. All right, stop filming. If we'd had the phone on a tripod recording, you would have been able to see the rest of this debacle. There was a lot of screaming and both of us with our hands on the fireplace trying to hold the tile up. Thank goodness we had the contact paper on there, but in the end we got it down. Only one tile was broken and fortunately the rest of the tile on this fireplace is adhered very well and won't have to come off. So this fireplace will be a very easy fix. Whenever you're going to demolish something, it's a good idea to take a lot of video and pictures of what it looks like before you start and kind of as you go, because at some point you have to put it back together. You can see the tiles here were just not stuck down. They're laying on a sandy surface. So those came out very easily. You can see that the tiles that came up from this hearth area were significantly damaged and broken. And I think that's because they were set in this loose sand and so there was nothing to support it. If somebody stepped on it or set something on it, the tile could flex and break. So there's not a lot to salvage here. I'm going to save everything anyway because I don't know until I put it back together exactly what I'm going to need. It was nice that they were embossed on the back with the manufacturer, so I can look these up and maybe learn a little bit more about the tile, even though they're just a plain white. It's nice to have the history behind them. It does have this pretty little metal beaded trim that hides the edge of the tile and gives it a clean finished look. And it's held on with twisted wire, which even taking my time and videoing how it was in there, I'm not exactly sure how it's going to go back. The fireplace liner was cast iron. It was very difficult to remove. It had four screws that held the three pieces together, the back and the two sides. It took me about an hour to get the first three screws out, and then I spent about four hours working on the last screw. I tried everything. I tried a hack that I found on the internet using the elastic band of one of my mask because I didn't have a rubber band, but supposedly putting the rubber band over the screw before you jam the screwdriver into the slot gives it some extra grip. That didn't work. I tried every tool I had. I sprayed it with WD-40. I sprayed it with machine oil. I 
tapped it with the hammer to try to break the rust free. I tried using my Sawzall. I tried, I don't know how many screwdrivers. And actually the screwdriver that ended up working the best was an old antique screwdriver I had. Part of the problem was that it was a slotted screw and the screwdrivers I had did not fit in there tightly or they were too angled and they didn't go deep enough into the slot. And remarkably, I had an old antique screwdriver. I don't know where I got it from in the bottom of my tool bag and it fit the best and the metal that it was made out of was actually the strongest and didn't deform when I was trying to turn the screw. But I don't have very strong hands so I couldn't get a strong grip on it so I was trying to use pliers and vice grips and channel locks and anything I could to kind of help me hold on. You have to push it into the slot with a lot of force and turn at the same time. And in this contorted position, I just didn't have the upper body strength to do that. Let me just say my back was super sore when this was done. This should be some kind of yoga pose because it was a deep stretch of some things that did not want to be stretched in my body. But finally, all that hard work paid off and it started turning to the point where I could just use my hands and turn the screwdriver and I got it free and got that stupid liner out. I was really tired, and as you can tell from this video, it was very heavy. I had to just drag the thing out. But then I had a nice surprise. On the back of it, it had writing, and it said spare room over dining. So this was just like the trim around the windows downstairs that we saw that it was manufactured off-site, obviously, and then labeled and shipped in so that the workers putting the house together knew exactly where everything went. Each fireplace was a little different, and this liner had this combination fleur-de-lis and a little bit of a flower pattern. Then I got an even better surprise. Okay, it's a great day. I found these shoved in the back of the fireplace, and it's three of my bathroom tiles. So I can clean them up and carry them around while I shop for something to fill that hole with. With the first round of demo done, it was time to clean up some of the loose debris and mortar that was stuck on the back of the fireplace and call it a day. I was tired, I was gross, I was dirty, and I just wanted to go home. As usual, that was way more work than I thought it was going to be. Look at all the mortar that fell out. First of all, I love my guys. I was late getting here this morning and they kept themselves busy and they came and cleaned the fireplace out. And now there's just this incredible discovery. Eliza Kempner remodeled. This fireplace used to be pink. What I know from Robert Lynch is that this was his uncle's bedroom and he obviously didn't want a pink fireplace so they replaced it with white which now i'm wondering if the other fireplaces were changed out so i don't feel so bad about doing something a little different here i might have to find a tile with pink in it to blend with the missing white that i've broken in the end i had to do even more demo all that concrete surround in the front that the tile was stuck onto had to come down everything was too damaged so it ended up just being the brick chimney structure so this fireplace is going to have to basically be rebuilt from scratch so it got all cleaned up and then i moved on to the big west bedroom that was the bedroom of daisy league when the house was built okay this is going to be awful i don't know how many i'm going to lose from strictly an outward appearance, this fireplace seemed to be the worst. The tile was very cracked. It was loose. Things just did not look See? good at all. The whole thing, the whole thing is off. <sighs> okay, I'm just gonna take all the guys 
Everybody's going to have to put their hands on a section. I'm just going to have to pray. Not exactly what I thought. The whole front of the fireplace came off. Okay, thank you. <laughs> That's good. I'll pick all those off. Thank you. That was not what I thought was going to happen. I thought I was going to pull the tile off because the tile is very loose and came off in big sheets. But while we were doing that, the whole front of the fireplace came off in big slabs. So I'm going to take this whole firebox out. Look how unattached this one is. stuck. I got the gas log unscrewed. And this is this is the little gas jet where the flame would come up and then disperse inside the logs. Let's see if I can get it out of there. Okay, I think this one has been remodeled too. It has these thin white tiles. And it had a daisy border, but as I'm pulling this around out, I'm coming across these yellowish cream, larger format tiles. So I think this one got a makeover from Miss Eliza also. And this guy's labeled room over parlor. I'm working on another video showing you what we found and how they're constructed and what's going on kind of behind the facade that we just removed and a little bit about how we're going to get these things back together. That's it for the fireplaces. Be sure and subscribe and turn on your notifications because in the next episode we're heading down to the ground floor to start getting ready for the plumbing and you don't want to miss my somewhat a failed attempt at learning to use the jackhammer. There's a lot of work left to be done to get this house back on its feet. And we appreciate all of you watching these videos and your kind comments of support. Be sure and check out our website, LeeKintnerHouse.org, if you'd like to make a donation or maybe sign up to be one of our volunteers. And for those of you who've already donated, a big, big thank you. We're working on a way to memorialize you permanently in the house. That's all for today. We hope to see you next time here in Galveston, Texas.